All right, what up traders? Super excited for today's video. We're gonna break down PBR um, and really just go over the oil crisis and the dilemma that we're facing with energy globally right now. And we're gonna go into how you could potentially uh, trade this and make some profit off of this, all right? So, um, you know, this is the bull channel that we've been in for the past, since COVID for the past two years. And you can see that, you know, it's just a straight uptrend, all right? We're gonna go over the fibs over here and over here, as well as right here, and really break down uh, what's truly happening with the price action and what are the key levels to watch. But we're going to dive into this OPEC issue right now. All right. So OPEC just announced the biggest cut to oil um, since the start of the pandemic. Now, this is huge, huge, huge global news, right? And we see here, right, look at who's um, included in this, Russia and Saudi Arabia. You know, are those our best friends? Is that the U.S.'s best friends? Not really, okay? And guess what they're doing? They're slashing oil production by 2 million barrels per day, the biggest cut since the start of the pandemic, right? And this is right before U.S. midterm elections. So what this does is provides a lot of fear and uncertainty. And, you know, we tend to get that a lot around the midterms especially the midterm elections, um, you know, once the midterms are over, then that fear and that uncertainty kind of goes away because you know uh, who's going to be in office and what the policies are going to be. Um, and we can see here uh, the Biden administration criticized them here recently in a statement on Wednesday, uh, calling it short-sighted and saying it will hurt low and middle income countries already struggling with elevated energy prices the most. Now, the most important thing to note here is that this is going to start in November. Uh, one of the things that's really been dragging down the stock market uh, is inflation. Okay, that's no secret. And it's also the Fed rate hikes. Well, the, you know, the rate hikes are going to be data dependent, as Jerome Powell said, on um, the you know inflation reports and the job market. So if the if the production cuts don't start till November, um, you know you're really not going to see this possible spike in energy prices, right? Because those energy prices go up in winter, right? Globally, um, people tend to use a lot of energy in the winter, and they're cutting it off right at November. So if that causes energy prices to go higher in the month of November and December. You know, you're not going to get those CPI reports. Those are lagging uh, reports. Those are always a month behind, right? So you're not going to see the November report till December. You're not going to see December's report until January. So, you know, that's the main thing is that this is really going to hurt us uh, more in the future, but it could be a potential catalyst for these energy stocks, all right? There's always a bull market somewhere. And, you know, it's really important to try to navigate this landscape as well as you can. So we're going to look at one stock in particular, PBR. Um, and, you know, this is an energy company, right? If you go into the Options Trading Tycoon's Discord, you can actually search any uh, specific ticker you want, and it will pull up all of the data from the Intel tabs, um, you know, because we have many tabs over here. There's an Intel tab um, that goes over sweeps, okay? So these are sweep call options, 40,000. We're seeing equity and dark pool activity. We're seeing $6 million right there, okay? Um, and this is what really, really caught my eye, this unusual option activity right here, $620,000 worth of premium, um, and it expires in less than one month, right? It expires on November 4th, and it's October 11th right now. So that's an extremely bullish bet. Um, you know, that can go to zero if you know, PBR doesn't reach 17 by November 4th, then, you know, all that money is going to be completely thrown away. So to me, that was very, very interesting and made me want to dive into the chart a little bit more and look at it. So that's what we're going to do now is we'll go into the chart and get into the TA. Uh, we're looking at the weekly chart right now. All right, we're going to highlight the pattern here on the RSI, the relative strength index. Um, it's pretty important, right? And, and the reason I'm going to show you guys why it's important is because it's our divergence that we have going on right now. So what a divergence is, is when you're seeing the price, all right, so let's go from here up to here. We're, see, we're seeing a high, and then we're seeing a higher high and a higher high. So the stock is clearly in an uptrend, right? But look at our relative strength index. The relative strength index is made a high, a lower high, a lower high, and a lower high. So the relative strength has been decreasing as this went up, and we've been holding this trend line as a valid resistance level on our RSI. But look at what it's kind of setting up here, right? This is setting up an inverse head and shoulders 
on the actual relative strength index. And we have this nice triangle pattern right here uh, where we're baselining, okay? And if we're able to break through this on our RSI, there's plenty of room to go before we hit the overbought territory again um, at 70 on our RSI. So I'm really going to be paying attention and seeing if we're going to be able to get a breakout past here. Um, and maybe this OPEC is bad news as it is. Maybe it could be a good catalyst to help propel the stock even higher. All right. Um, so now that we covered the RSI and that divergence, uh, we'll go ahead and highlight how you know PBR has been in an entire uptrend uh, since the pandemic. OK, if we could look at the uh, how much it's up since since the covid lows. All right, it hit highs of up 300%. And currently, um, at the time of this recording, the stock is up 250%. All right. Um, so, you know, it's been on an amazing rally. Lots of energy stocks have uh, since, you know, the COVID lows. And we're going to take a look at why, you know, this level up here, this, this uh, supply zone, okay, from about 1570 to about 1470 is going to be very, very important. Um, and it could be the wall that we can't get past, or it's going to tell us that we're about to blow through here. All right. Uh, reason being is if we take our previous low and highs on the chart, right, and we take these lows, all right, up to the recent highs, all right, um, it's going to give us the 786, 618.5. You know, it's going to give you all of the retracement levels. And look at when we came back down and finally pulled back after the, the big rally up. Look at where we broke. We broke the 786, but it didn't stay down there for long. And then it actually came back and retested it over here and it used it as support and continued higher. So the reason I'm showing you that is because we're looking for the retracement of this big move upwards, right? So it comes down and we're looking to see how far it retraces. If we look now um, at our most recent um, highs to lows, we're trying to retrace this move before the pandemic right now, okay? We're trying to retrace this move from here down to here, and we're going to see and look at the 786, and look, it's doing the same thing again right now. All right, so we're not able to get past the 786 of this retracement. Um, and that's, you know, that's that's kind of common. All right. That's something that you're going to see. Uh, we just saw it over here in the past. And, you know, what's really going to be important is if we get above this level. All right. We're going to come back up here into our next supply imbalance. And once we're there, um, this thing really, really could take off all right energy really could take off there's not going to be much resistance holding it back all right um and the reason being again is that 786 level right once we get past there and we're able to flip this to support right right now it's been a strong resistance and we've been coming up and just dumping down right that's why we have the supply zone here it's right along our 786 and you know it's going to be a really tough level for us to battle and beat but just as we had a uh, inverse head and shoulder setting up here on the RSI, we have a little bit of an inverse head and shoulder setting up here on the actual stock price. Now, that's not to say that we can't come back down. If you look on our bullish channel here, we're trading directly at the uh, middle of that. And it's being a nice resistance level right now. OK, so, you know, we tried to push up higher. Uh, we just came back down. The week isn't over yet, so we may see this pull back down reverse and head back into our supply zone. But the more times you test a supply zone, um, you know, you have to think all of those orders are being filled. Right. So how much more supply is going to be there when we've come into this zone one time, two time, three time, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You know, we've already spent 12 weeks in this supply zone uh, just here in the, you know, the recent past. All right. So you have to ask yourself the question, are those sell orders, is that supply imbalance still going to be there after those 12 weeks? Um, are there any catalysts? Right. And we do have some catalysts. So I do think that, you know, if we're able to break past here, we will be heading up towards $18. Um, but, you know, you just have to be cautious. There's a very small gap down right here to fill. And those gaps tend to fill about 90 to 95 percent of the time. Right. We can look here. Last time I had a small gap down to fill and I ended up filling it, but not before going on a very, very big rally. Right. So it, it gapped up, created that gap down to fill and it went even higher. And then it came back down eventually and filled the gap. So we may see something similar. Right. We may see this bullishness continue and keep heading higher. 
ultimately until you know prices reverse and we come back down and, and end up filling this zone, uh, this small gap down, all right? Um, if we look again right here, all right, and we take uh, this move and we go ahead and look for our retracement levels, um, you know, here's our swing low, here's our swing high up here, and we can see that, you know, we're pretty much holding the levels pretty well, all right? After getting this high, we come down, we bounce um, right here in between the 382 and the 0.5, so that's a pretty strong sign, right? We're still in a pretty bullish uptrend. Um, you know, if you're if you're finding support above the 50% retracement level, uh, you know, then that's a good sign that you're in a healthy uptrend. It may not be the strongest. It would have been a lot stronger if we would have held the 0.236 or the 0.382 exactly as support. Um, but you know, after we made those highs up here, it did come down and break. Uh, the 382 and we're basically found some demand right in between the 0.5 and the 0.382 um, currently right now look at where we gapped up to right when we had that gap that we were just discussing it was right there at the 0.236 level so it's going to be um, a pretty key level in my in my view that we need to hold um, you know if you want this stock to be going any higher and then you have to watch out for your supply zone right here. Um, and, you know, once we're able to break past these, we have a very small resistance right here, right in between uh, our next supply zone to the upside. All right. So hopefully you learned a little bit of something in this video. Um, and if you made it this far, make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. I do do viewer requests every single week. So if you have a specific stock, maybe you want me to break down a different energy stock. I can break down Oxy. I know Oxy is really popular right now or just do the energy sector, XLE. Um, I do cryptocurrency as well. So yeah, just leave a comment below. I'll be happy to get to it as soon as I can.